Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I am Donatello and this is The Way. Here today at The Way, I have a message of faith and it is coming out of Genesis 27. And we're talking about Jacob stealing Esau's blessing. So when we're in here, if you do not know this Bible story, let me refresh your memory. So we have Isaac old. He is dang near blind can't see a thing and he calls in his oldest son Esau and he says Esau come to me has Esau come to him and he says go out and kill me something make me some delicious meat go kill it bring it back to me so I can give you my blessing now Esau goes and little does he know that Rebecca is listening his mom and his mom goes and runs and tells Jacob and says Jacob I want you to bring this food to your father and pretend to be your brother. And Jacob's like, Esau is so hairy. I am smooth like a baby. There is no way he's going to see that I'm lying. And then he's going to curse me. And so she does a little deceiving and puts on animal skins on Jacob's arms and makes it so that he's hairy. And then he smells like the field. And so he goes in, he brings the food. And at first Isaac's like, okay, that was fast. He, I think he thinks something's up. And so he's questioning him and I, and everything Isaac's asking, Jacob has an answer for. So he leans in because Isaac's like, I could tell the smell of my sons. Leans in, smells the field and is like, ah, this surely is my son. So what does he do? He blesses him and he blesses him richly. And he pours out a huge blessing on top of Jacob. Not only does he steal Esau's blessing, but then he goes and he steals his birthright. Esau is so hungry, starving. And Jacob is making some nice stew, cooking it up real good. And what happens? Esau comes in, he's starving. And Jacob says, I will give you this food if you sell me your birthright. And Esau doesn't even think about it. He sells it. So now Esau has lost everything. And Jacob has gained everything. I was reading this yesterday and I got brought back to it again today about the importance of taking your time patience okay it's not just a virtue it's more than that taking things to God now if Esau took things to God and asked him and took a moment things might have turned out a lot different for him but instead Jacob received all of the blessings he received the birthright he received all of these things because of his deceptive ways but what I want to focus on is Esau Yes, Jacob did things that were deceptive, but Esau, Esau was so impulsive, not when it comes to his blessing being stolen, but with his birthright, his birthright, that is his right as the firstborn. And he so easily gave it up because he was hungry, because he fell to the flesh. So I want to ask you, what are you giving up so easily because you're falling to the flesh? What are you not doing or giving that you shouldn't be giving away? Because you're not taking time to commune with God. You're not taking that moment to talk to him, to interact, to ask him if this is even something he wants you to do. Or are you taking it like Esau, falling to your flesh in hunger and saying, I will trade you whatever. I will trade you whatever and I will do whatever. Just give it to me. His flesh was screaming louder than God's voice. And that is the importance of taking a moment. It's so quintessential to take that moment and go to God because it could seem like a good idea, but it's not a God idea. This isn't where God's leading you. If you keep making these rash decisions, you're going to end up down a wrong path. And God is saying, come back to me. Come back to me and I will make you new. Your flesh is screaming louder than me, but if you quiet your voice, if you quiet the sounds around you, you will hear me. Because my voice is still and small, but it is mighty. 
and it will lead you where you need to go if you only listen to it. So I'm asking you to please come to God and listen to him in those moments when you're about to give away your birthright, when your blessing is being stolen and you're so hurt. Instead of just impulsively doing something, pray to God. Go and talk to him because you're going to get hurt and there is going to be pain and strife. But if you go to God before you act, you're saving yourself a step. Revenge is not the way of our God. That's the way of the world. And we want to live where our God is and not where the world is. So I want to say a prayer over you. Just pray for all the Esau's out there. All the Esau's who are feeling like they're getting the raw end of the deal that their blessings keep getting stolen by the Jacobs of the world and they're struggling. They're struggling with impulse and making a rash, quick decision, Lord God. Slow the pace. Bring the pace back to a steady walk so they may be able to hear your voice, the power of your voice, and let it radiate through them. Allow everyone that's listening to be blessed abundantly. To have so much of a blessing that it overflows out and they cannot contain it themselves that they must give to others because they are receiving so much of your blessings, Lord. Open up the heavens and pour out a blessing so grand, so big and glorious that we can only say that came from God and God alone. I pray a prayer for protection over everyone listening and everyone not listening. For all those whose eyes and ears are closed, Lord God, that you open them. That you allow whoever needs to hear this to hear this and for the moment that they want to react, that they come to you. The moment they want to make a big decision, make a big purchase, make any kind of movement that will change the trajectory of their life, that they will come to you first and sit with you, Lord God. Sit with you and not be bitter about the decisions that are made. That they accept it in loving peace. Lord God, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 you guys. That was really just a beautiful message that I think a lot of us needed to hear. And I wanna say that each message is unique to each person not every single message is meant for every single person it should always be brought before god in confirmation in communion maybe this is something that you've been praying about and this is the confirmation right you can only truly know if you bring it before the king of kings the lord of lords and ask him is this what you wanted me to hear is this message for me i feel it burning and moving with deep inside me is this is this for me lord god and allow him to guide you along the way i love you guys so much god loves you so much i can't wait to get back on here and see you guys later